You yeah. cite three reasons for your assessment. The first one involves President Biden keeping what you call his central promise in 2020. What is that? When in the 2020 campaign, his central promise was to get us to the other side of COVID successfully. And I think he's fulfilled that promise. I mean, you look at the economy today, right? We have the strongest recovery of any G7 country, the, the best job market since the 1960s. You know, we were, the stock market is breaking records. The deficit is down from when he came into office. I think it is just clear as day when you look at where the country is now that Joe Biden is a good president. The country is better off. The Democratic Party is strong and winning elections all over the country. And that we end, we enter 2024 in really good shape. And it leaves me very optimistic about what we can do next year. I don't think it is widely understood how strong the Democratic Party is right now. You had really good elections in 2018 and 2020. Once the country really understood that Trump had become MAGA, I think there was some belief in 2016 that he would be sort of a country club Republican businessman. But once we understood how extreme he was, Democrats had two terrific elections in a row in 2018 and 2020. But then what was supposed to happen is that the party in power usually loses seats in off-year elections and midterm elections. That's what's happened going back decades in America. And the exact opposite has happened. Right? We actually gained ground in most of the major battleground states in 2022 in Arizona, Colorado, Georgia, Minnesota, Michigan, New Hampshire, Pennsylvania. And those strong performances that we saw throughout the country in 2022 have carried on into 2023. We just won elections all over the country, right? We took away a six-week abortion ban in Ohio. We won two of the largest Republican cities in the country, Colorado Springs and Jacksonville. We've had a remarkable year. And so when voters have had to vote, not answer polls, but when they've actually had to go vote, Democrats keep defying history, winning elections. The Republicans continue to struggle. And to me, this is the most important electoral data that we have today. It's far more important to me than polling to, to help us understand where we are as we enter 2024. And two major things have happened to the Republican Party since 2020 that's going to make it far harder for them to win and have been instrumental in our election victories over the last several years. And that's the ending of Roe uh, and stripping away of the fundamental rights of more than half the population. And then the attempt to overturn the election in 2020 and end American democracy for all time. Those two things have been front and center in our politics in the last couple of years. And the Republicans have really struggled with these new realities that are weighing down their brand. So I think any comparison to 2016 or 2020 is invalid. This is a new election. Every election is unique. It's always different. That's never like any other election. And the Republicans have these two enormous anchors dragging down their brand as they enter into 2024. And it's not just me saying it. It's what we've seen in elections since the spring of 2022. I know you don't necessarily <laughs> rely on the polls at this point. How do you perceive, yeah. though, his standing? Trump, I'm talking about. He's ahead of Biden in some of the recent polls, and that includes yeah. a number of the key swing states. Do you yep. think those are just outliers? No, I think it's 11 months out. You know, there's the Republicans have a primary. We haven't really we don't have a primary. We haven't started. The Biden campaign hasn't turned on yet fully. I mean, it's very, polls can't predict the future. They can't tell you what's going to happen tomorrow, let alone, you know, what's going to happen 11 months from now. And having what I, part of the reason I got 2022 right was that I, I didn't center my analysis around polling. I looked at a lot of other data, some of the stuff we were discussing today, and I feel really good about where we are. I mean, I think we're going to have a good year next year. I think we're going to win the presidency. We're going to flip the House. I think the Senate's going to be a battle, you know, to the, you know, to the final day and be decided by one seat. But I think Democrats should feel good about how we're ending 2023 and be very optimistic. We have a lot of work to do, right? No doubt. This is going to Trump is a formidable candidate and we're going to have to beat him. But what's important is that I think we have the opportunity in 2024, not just to win an election, but if we can win this one big, if we can win it by five, six, seven points. We can really weaken the hold of MAGA on the Republican Party, which is going to be good for everybody, Democrat and Republican alike.